starting out 31, we're still going to solve a logarithmic equation in example 7. But example 7 differs from example 6 in that in example 7, you can see I have logarithms on both sides of the equal sign. And that was different from example 6 where I only had a logarithm on one side of the equal sign. So let me just write this down here. I have, in this case, logarithms on both sides of the equation. And when you have logarithms on both sides of the equation, the mechanics of solving this are that you want to get a single logarithm on either side of the equation and then set the arguments equal to each other. So let me write that down. Get single argument or single logarithm on either side of equation. and set the arguments equal to each other. Oops, set arguments. All right, so let me just put this in its own little squiggles. All right, so let's go ahead and evaluate or just take a closer look at what we have here. I have a logarithm, I have two logarithms on this side of the equation, right? So I have two here, one here. So the right side of the equation is good to go. All right, I have a single logarithm over here, but the left side of the equation is not good to go because I have two logarithms. So what I need to do on the left side of the equation is get this into a single logarithm. And now just taking note, I, I see I have common logs. I don't have a super or a subscript down here, so I'm going to assume that's common log. But really, it doesn't matter the base. As long as I'm adding two separate logarithms, I can use the product property of logarithms and combine these into a single logarithm as long as the argument is now a product. Okay, And that will be equal to log of x plus 8. And what happened is if you have two expressions that are equal to each other and you've got logarithms on both of them, if, if these two expressions are equal to each other and they're both logged, then the arguments have to be the same. All right, so we're going to just set the arguments equal to each other because now I have a single logarithm over here and a single logarithm over here. And you can imagine if I had log of x equaling log of y, well, then x has to be equal to y. And that's what we're about to do. Since these are both logarithmic expressions and they're the same base, their arguments have to be the same. So I know from here that x times 2x plus 1 is equal to x plus 8. So that actually gets rid of the logarithms just in general. And now I actually have a quadratic equation and I can solve a quadratic equation. So I'm going to go ahead and foil this out, not foil, excuse me, distribute. I will have, ooh, not x squared, I will have 2x squared here. Hold on, let me rewrite this. All right, so, all right, I will have 2x squared plus x. That will be equal to x plus 8. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and subtract x from both sides. You could subtract 8 from both sides, but I'm noticing something. When I let 2x, or when I subtract x squared from both sides, the linear term actually goes away because I have an x on either side. And then I, I don't even need the quadratic formula or to factor it. I can solve it directly. If I divide both sides by 2, right, I'll have 2x squared is equal to 8, but I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So that will tell me x squared is equal to 4, which will get me towards this answer. I will have x equaling either plus or minus 2. And whenever you get answers to logarithmic equations, since they do have domain issues, you have to test out both of your x values and make sure they keep your arguments positive. All right, so I have two potential answers, right? I have either x is equal to 2 or x is equal to negative 2. So let's try plugging these in. If I was going to plug in x equaling 2, I'll go to this first or maybe the third argument here. But the argument on the right side, 2 plus 8 is 10. 
that's fine. I'm allowed to do that. All right, then I'm gonna take a look and I'm gonna have an X going here. I'm gonna put my two here and two is positive, so I'm good. Let me plug a two in here. Two times two is four, four plus one is five, that's good. So this argument is working as a whole. All right, or this X value leaves all of my arguments positive. Let's try negative two. If I plug negative two into this argument, negative two plus eight is positive six, so that's fine. But if I plug negative two in here, that is a problem. I'm not allowed to take the logarithm of negative two. And over here we had two times negative two, which is negative four. Negative four plus one is negative three. So I have an argument issue on, on this logarithm. So basically the left side of my equation, it's, it's bad news bears. I can't use this solution. So really the only solution to this logarithmic equation is x being equal to two. All right, so now we've got our two techniques. We've got what you do when you have a logarithm on one side and a number on the other. Right? You transform it into the equivalent exponential equation and solve it. And now we've talked about what do you do when you have a logarithm on both sides of the equation. We're gonna get a single logarithm on either side of the equation like we did here, and then we set the arguments equal to each other. All right, so we've done all four. We've done both versions of the exponential equations both versions of the logarithmic equations. Now it's just a free-for-all, all right? I'll catch you in a bit. Bye.